Our project looked at microfluidics object detection. I'm Mercedes. My partners are Deanna, Benjamin, and Porus. U-Drop is a microfluidic droplet detection that is a part of CIDR Labs. It uses image processing techniques to improve the automation of droplet detection and quantification of droplet diameter and generation rate. Our goal is to improve the functionality of U-Drop to handle variations in the droplets. These variations can include transparency, oils, and background noise. So in terms of specification and what we'd like to see improved um, overall design by increasing the accuracy and precision of the original U-Drop tool, specifically getting within 10% of the hand calculated values for the droplet diameter and drops per second, as well as minimizing the standard deviation of the droplet diameter calculation, which would also increase our precision. So now let's go over the features and functionality of our tool. Here we have the overall block diagram where the green boxes are the specific sections that we added or changed. Expanding into our portion of this diagram, we can get into the more specific architecture that we added. First, the video is sent to the filtering stage where the user can select one out of three different types of filters. After the video has made it past this stage, it is sent to the edge detection module. And after some initial analysis, the tool goes into the first edge detection threshold modification loop. And this loop is basically used to prevent the program from accidentally setting the threshold so high that no edges are detected within the droplet bounding box. Next, we have the optional extra fine tuning, where we systematically change our edge detection thresholds using the parameters from the first loop as a starting point. In each iteration of this loop, we perform three things. The edge detection analysis, wave smoothing, as well as diameter calculation. From the data collected in this loop, uh, we identify a couple of the best performing thresholds for the user to visualize in the GUI. Here we can get into some more detail about the filtering aspect. We insert a filtering module between the steps where the user provides the video and the pre-inputs. It should be noted that some filters work better than others for different videos, so we focus on three in total. Two zero, which cuts from the bottom, so darker values are set to black. Binary, in which brighter values are all fixed the same color. And truncating, which cuts from the top, so brighter values get dark. There are some other threshold types as well, like inverse binary and inverse to zero, but these didn't really show any promise in preliminary testing. Here is a comparison between the various filtering options. With 2.0, we see not much change from the filter from the unfiltered image. I just have some more contrast, but there is still too much background noise. With the binary filter, we brighten up the channel and the edges get darker, and there's some more contrast between the background and the droplet outline. With the truncated filter, the background noise is mostly filtered out and the edges pop. The whole image is darker, but the relative pixel values make this image easier for you drop to analyze. Now let's take a look at the code which implements all this. This is the function that performs the filter. In the red box, the video is open for streaming and configurations are set like the video uh, size, codec, frame rate, etc. In the blue box, frames are opened one by one from the start of the video to the end, and a filter is added to each frame individually. CV2 provides API functionality to pass on a certain filtering algorithm, define pixel value boundaries, and have all of that be applied. Afterwards, the frame is appended onto the end of the new output video. One of the design considerations we had to make was whether or not to let the user choose which filter they wanted to apply. On one hand, this would provide more functionality, but on the other, it makes the program slightly more complex and adds arguments that need to be passed in. However, because there are videos that do poorly with one type of filter, but better with another, all filters are kept and modularized to be selectable by the user at this, as part of the startup command. So this is our filtering demo. Uh, we simply type in the type of following the command, count three, the um, you drop and we want the video choice. So in this case, we have a video on file, the mineral or oil water. And then we want to implement our filter. So we just include the argument of filter and we run it. And this will take a while to load. Each frame will be analyzed. So I will pause. Man and the filter is loaded. Um, we are prompted with the new drop setup window. So here we will select frames per second and the blue line distance. This is given by the lab. So now we will select the um, bounding box. When drawing the bounding box, it's important to make sure that there's only one droplet inside the bounding box at all times. Once you have verified that, we can move on and we can draw the line segment of the channel. Then we confirm and it will load again and we'll pause. Now we are prompted with the U-Drop analysis window. This has all our uh, information such as drops per second, average drops per diameter, pixels and micrometers. Drops for diameter and standard deviation and pixels and micrometers. This is the edge detection threshold modification, which prevents the program from setting the threshold so high no edges are detected within the droplet bounding box. Here, we'll see a short demo video. First, we see the user define the droplet bounding box and the channel height and insert that information into the GUI. And the program goes right into using the default canny weight and uses the modification loop only if the average pixel value is lower than the threshold we defined in the code, which only applies to certain videos or filters. At each iteration, the average pixel value is also calculated, and we'll skip ahead to see the results. 
So after a couple iterations, we see if the canning rates are lowered each time and we get our final results and we see them for a couple of frames. As was shown with the truncate filter, we needed to lower the threshold significantly to reach a threshold that would yield actual edges. The same is true for the unfiltered video, but even with the threshold modification, the droplets are not detected because of the high background noise. And sometimes, for example, in this video, with the 2-0 filter, the edges are very defined and the thresholds are not lowered at all. The next mo module we made further refined these thresholds by looping through small changes to both the lower and higher values. At the end, the best performing combinations are determined based on the standard deviation and output to the GUI. The fine tuning does take a while to complete due to all the calculations, but it might be preferable in certain cases. Here, we're comparing the first loop and the fine tune result. For the same droplet, the fine tune diameter is correct, unlike the diameter calculated after the first loop. To analyze how applying the filters influenced the performance of U-Drop, the percentage differences was calculated compared to their respective measured value. For the calculating the diameter in clear fluid, both the unfiltered and filtered were within 10% of the measured diameter. However, the binary filter performed the best, being within 4.23% of the value. In colored fluid, only the truncating filter performed within the 10% specification, being within 2.33%. In mineral oil, the filters outperformed the unfiltered, with the truncating giving the least percentage difference. For the drops per second, both clear and colored fluid had large percentage differences, however, still performed better than the base compared to the measured value. In mineral oil, adding filters did not significantly influence the drops per second and are within 10%, the 10% specification. The measured standard deviation was not included since it was not reflective of how the algorithm performed. For standard deviation, we looked to see lower standard deviation as a way to indicate improvement. The binary filter reduced standard deviation in both the colored fluid and mineral oil, while the truncated filter improve results in the clear fluid. Either way, the filters perform better in terms of measuring standard deviation diameter. So for future editions, the strategy works well when you only have three videos, but it becomes inefficient when you have more videos come into play. Also, there are some things to consider when applying a filter, such as camera zooms, lightings, and physical channels. These aspects can either assist us or hinder us. This just goes to show the variation from video to video is um, immense, and it's one of the aspects we'd like to improve upon in the future. This would require a larger set of data, ideally data with predefined values, and it could possibly lay foundation to implement a neural network that can optimize the system and automate some aspects in future iterations of this project. We'd like to acknowledge and thank Professor Densmore, David, and Jackson for helping and giving advice throughout the project process.